so you have applied all your understanding of portfolio management and designed a portfolio but see simply designing a portfolio is not sufficient at regular intervals of time you also have to make changes to your portfolio if you look at the composition of the market index for example you know that in sensex there are 30 companies you know in nifty there are 50 companies but see these companies which are there in the index that also keeps on changing from time to time for example earlier z telefilms was a part of sensex and the nifty why I'm giving you example of Z telefilms is because it's very close to me. If I remember my childhood days, Z TV was the first general Hindi channel that was uh, that that started operating in India. So I have very good memories of Z TV. It was the first time that the concept of cable TV was introduced in India. Okay and z telefilms or we can say z tv it captured the imagination of india at that time it became a very prominent company of india and it was included in the sensex right in those 30 companies z tv was included it is known as z telefilms it was included so it was included even in nifty as on today it is no longer that prominent company of india so if you see the composition of those 30 companies or 50 companies today we do not find ZTV over there. Earlier, Satyam was also part of the composition of the Sensex and the Nifty. But once the fraud of Satyam was unearthed, it was kicked out of that particular uh, list. So what I'm just trying to say is that from time to time, uh, the best companies keep on changing, right? During the 80s, 90s, no one had heard about Infosys. Today, it is one of the most prominent companies of India. So as time progresses, different sectors, their performance also changes. So simply designing a portfolio is not sufficient. The companies which are best today, not necessarily are best even after one year or let's say after two years. So a lot of companies may be showing promise that it will give you good return, but it may or may not give return. There is no point of holding those securities forever and ever. And that's the reason we should carry out what we will refer as portfolio rebalancing. By portfolio rebalancing, we mean that from time to time, we should make changes to our portfolio. We even refer this as formula plans. There are three strategies over here. Actually, there are only two strategies. Uh, the first one that we are going to discuss, uh, although it is considered to be a strategy, in my opinion, it is not a strategy at all. But still, I will discuss this three portfolio rebalancing uh, methods or portfolio rebalancing strategies, or as I said, a formula plan for the same. Now, let's start with the first one. Let us say you have rupees 1 lakh to invest. Okay. So what you do is you decide that 70% I will invest in equity and 30% let's say I want to keep it safe. I have 1 lakh rupees to invest. 30% I am safely parking it in a fixed deposit. And the balance 70,000 rupees I am investing in the stock market. In other words, I have decided a mix of equity and debt. This mix of equity and debt I will initially create. And after that, I will not make any changes at all. This is what is popularly known as buy and hold strategy. Buy and hold strategy. Getting it? So under the buy and hold strategy, we make investments. And then after making investment, we tell ourselves, forget about it. You know, I just want to forget about those shares. I just want to forget about the different companies whose shares I have invested in. For example, let us say I have a 10 year horizon. So I think in this way that I'm a long term investor. So for 10 years, I don't want to disturb my portfolio. So whatever shares that I've already invested in, I will simply remain invested in them for the next 10 years. 
So this is what we call as a buy and hold strategy. As I said, in my opinion, this is not a strategy at all. What is this? You buy and do nothing. Yes, you heard me right. Many a times this is known as do nothing strategy. Buy shares, file them and forget them, isn't it? This is what we are doing over here. Okay, will this strategy work? Now, you require a lot of luck over here. This strategy will work only if the markets rise. If the markets do not rise, then this strategy will not work. In this strategy, the return that you are going to get is directly proportional to the direction in which the markets will move. For example, let us say you have purchased some 15, 20 shares and you are saying I will wait now for 10 years. Fine, you are planning to hold it for 10 years. You are saying this is for my retirement. You know, you say it is my retirement purpose. And let's say you are of the view I'll retire after 10 years or maybe after 20 years or maybe after 30 years. So today you will buy shares and for a very long period of time you will hold these shares. If the share prices of these companies rise over your investment horizon, you will benefit from this strategy. But by chance, if the share prices crash, you will lose out in this strategy. Because what happens is in this strategy, you are simply not tracking your portfolio. Tracking a portfolio is extremely important. As I told you earlier, right? If you are saying my investment horizon is 10 years, 10 years is a very long period of time. A lot of things can happen in 10 years. The companies which are prominent as on today may or may not be that prominent after 10 years. It's quite possible you might be stuck with certain companies whose shares you should have sold long before. But because you decided that no, I will hold it for the next 10 years, you are stuck with the wrong companies. So yes, this is what we call as a do nothing strategy. As I said, with a bit of luck, if all the companies that you have purchased, all their share prices have reason, then you have a lot of money to be made over here. But by chance, if the company share prices have crashed, you will lose money over here. So as an investor, I will not advise anyone to follow a buy and hold strategy. There are other formula plans that you can use. And now I will discuss with you a formula plan that definitely works really well. I'll show you the other one. Yes, the strategy that I wish to discuss with you at a great length, of course, is constant mix policy if you are a well-disciplined investor the strategy will work really well it starts in the same way okay it starts in the same way as the buy and hold strategy you have to first decide what is the total amount of money that you want to invest you know this is really important in real life first we have to earn money and then we have to save money Saving money itself is very tough these days, right? Because the moment you are earning money, you know, the moment you start earning money, your wish list is already ready. That this is what I want to buy. This is what I want to buy. Here is where I want to spend, right? And that is the reason saving money nowadays itself is becoming difficult. And after saving money, let's say you have somehow been able to save money, investing it is an altogether different thing. So let's say you have been able to save a lakh of rupees and now you want to invest it. We will again discuss in the same way only that 70% I have decided to invest in equity. I don't want to expose my entire savings to risk. So that's the reason I have decided that 30% I will invest in a fixed deposit. So 70% in equity, 30% in a fixed deposit, right? So one can say that I've invested 70,000 over here and 30,000 in the fixed deposit. Okay, now let's say I've decided that after every three months, I will carry out some kind of rebalancing every three months. Every three months, I will review my portfolio. That's what I mean to say. 
okay so what we do is let's say a quarter is coming to an end and let us say the stock markets let's say are up let's say they are up by 20 percent let's say the markets are up by 20 percent okay so let's understand what will happen in that case your equity was 70,000. If the market is up by 20%, then your investment in equity shares will increase, isn't it? Their value will increase. So let us say the value of equity shares is now 84,000. Your fixed deposit is 30,000, right? Your fixed deposit will not go up and down. You may say, what about the interest? Yes, interest will be credited to your FD account or it may be credited to your savings account. Fine. I'm talking about the value, the basic principal amount. The basic principal amount will remain 30,000. It's not going to go up and down because the market is going up and down. So 84,000 plus 30,000, that means you are now having a portfolio which has a value of 1,14,000, right? So you have a portfolio which has a value of 1,14,000. Okay, now tell me, what was your mix of equity and debt? You have decided to maintain a equity debt mix of 70%, 30%. So you know what you should do? After one quarter, when you have decided to do rebalancing, you should again ask yourself, how much is 70% and how much is 30%? So 1 lakh 40, I'm multiplying by 70%. I am getting 79,800. And this figure is turning out to be 34,200. So as you can see, 79,800 and 34,200. That means your investment in equity. If you see right now, your investment in equity is 84,000. But as per your formula plan, your investment in equity should be only 79,800. In other words, 4,200 rupees are excessively invested in the equity markets. You know what you should do? You should sell shares of 4,200. And one important thing, after you have sold shares of 4,200, don't spend that money. No, this 4,200 should be invested in the fixed deposit. You should make your profit safe. That is what the strategy is saying. So the strategy says that, see, right now you, your investment in equity, you see the figures carefully. It says that, see, right now your investment in equity is worth 84,000, right? It is worth 84,000. But as I said, you have to maintain a constant mix of equity and debt. If you have decided equity should be 70% on the rebalancing date, you have to bring it down to 70%. That means I realize that it should be only 79,800. So what I should do is I should sell equity of 4,200 and I should buy a fixed deposit over here of 4,200 sell shares and invest it in the fixed deposit. Don't spend away that money. You should make your profit safe. This is what we are planning over here. So the first quarter comes to an end and this is the rebalancing that I'm doing. Every three months I will carry out a rebalancing. You can even decide the rebalancing period to be six months. You may even decide the rebalancing to be at least one year. I will advise it should not be more than one year. At least once in a year, you should review your portfolio. A lot of people even do rebalancing, you know, every week, every month, depends upon what kind of investor you are, depends upon how many trades you are comfortable with. Let's say we wait for one more quarter. Quarter two. This time, yes, the markets are down. Let's say the markets crash by 10%. So let's understand what will happen to equity now. See, now I will take this figure. 
because we have already done the rebalancing, right? So now our investment in equity is 79,800, but it has crashed by 10%. So 79,800 minus 10%, I am getting 71,820. Your fixed deposit, of course, is 34,200, right? I'm taking this new figure because earlier we had decided to sell shares and invest in the fixed deposit. So 34,200. So to this, I add 34,200. My total portfolio is worth 1,6020, right? It's worth 1,6020. Okay. I will again revisit my debt and equity ratio okay equity ratio so again i'll argue how much is 70 percent how much is the 30 percent so i multiply by 70 percent i get 74,214. the balancing figure 31,806. okay so as you can observe now your investment in equity, your investment in equity should be 74,214. But actually your investment right now is 71,820. That means I'm supposed to increase my investment in the equity. In other words, I should buy equity shares this time. I should buy equity shares. But when you buy equity shares, it is not fresh money that you will invest. No, you will not invest fresh money. The money which is lying in the fixed deposit, I will withdraw money from there and I will buy shares. In other words, I will sell. Although this is not the right word, you cannot sell a fixed deposit. You will have to basically withdraw from fixed deposit. So I'll withdraw from fixed deposit. How much? I will withdraw. 2394 and I will buy shares worth 2394. So I will buy shares of 2394 by withdrawing that much of money from the fixed deposit. And thereby I will again ensure that the end of the second quarter, I'm again maintaining my constant mix of 70% of equity and 30% of debt or 30% of my risk free security. Every quarter, you should keep on doing this. Every quarter, carry out the rebalancing. Every quarter, ensure that you should not be overexposed to equity or you should not be underexposed to equity. Remember, if you are selling shares, if you are selling shares, withdraw, uh, sorry, if you are selling shares, whatever money you are receiving, invest that in the fixed deposit. If you are buying shares, withdraw from the fixed deposit and invest it in the stock market. If you are doing this in a disciplined manner, the strategy works extremely well. It works extremely well. You know what this strategy is doing? I'll show you that, what the strategy is doing. Just a second. Yes, just see here. See, this is the place where you are selling shares. Let me show it in this way. This is the place where you are selling shares. This is the situation when you are buying shares. Okay. Now see, when are you selling shares? This is a situation where the markets have reason. While this is the situation where the markets have fallen. Okay, so markets have gone down over here. There is a fall in the markets. While the first situation was where, where the markets had reason. So this is what this strategy is making you do. This strategy makes you buy shares. Let me discuss this thing first. This strategy makes you buy shares when the markets are down. See, when the stock markets have crashed, this strategy says that, see, this is the right time to buy the shares. And when the markets have reason, as it was in this case, right? When the markets have reason, it makes you sell shares. This is the basic theme of this particular strategy. Buy shares when markets are down, sell shares when markets have reason. 
so many a times we buy so many things during a sale, isn't it? So many times we wait for a sale. For example, the sales on Amazon, Flipkart, they've become so popular in India. So many a times what happens is we are interested in buying certain things. You may add it to your wish list and then you may wait till the actual sale occurs. You know that before Diwali, there will be a major sale of Amazon, major sale of Flipkart. So at that time, discounts will be available. So you want to buy this at a discounted price. When the markets are down and shares are trading at a low price, don't you feel that this is some kind of a sale on the stock market? So you feel that when the markets are down, I will buy shares because I will get good companies at a discounted price. And when the markets have reason that very share that I had purchased at a discounted price, I will sell those shares. So this is what the strategy's philosophy is. Okay, now, uh, when will this strategy work extremely well? Let me tell you that also. When will the strategy work extremely well? Okay, this strategy works extremely well when stock markets, there's a typical term, when the stock markets are oscillating. When the markets are oscillating, this strategy works extremely well. Oscillating, right? Something like a pendulum. Try to recall a pendulum, the movement of the pendulum, right? Going up, going down, going down, going up, right? That movement, that is what we call as oscillating movement. When the stock markets are showing oscillating movements, that means at regular intervals of time, they are rising, at regular intervals of time, they are falling, then this is considered to be an oscillating market. In an oscillating market, this strategy works the best. It really works the best. You know why? Just think for something like this. The markets are rising. We know when markets are rising, you should be selling shares. But let's put it in this way, that the markets are rising, then falling, then rising, then falling, then rising and falling. If this is what is happening in the markets, you can understand what will be happening. You will be buying shares the moment they start rising, uh, sorry. I'll just remove this. You will be selling shares. You will again be buying. You will again be selling. You will again be buying. You will be again be selling, right? You keep on accumulating shares when the markets have gone down. So you are buying shares at a cheaper rate. And whenever the markets rise, you are selling the shares. So that's where the strategy works extremely well. But you know, there is one major limitation in the strategy that we are discussing. And I also like to pinpoint that. See, this strategy works provided you are a disciplined investor. You know, what is a disciplined investor? The rebalancing strategy says you should sell and you sell it. The rebalancing strategy says this is time to buy and you buy it. Are you that disciplined investor? then the strategy will work extremely well. But if you are not a well-disciplined uh, investor, if you are an investor who is caught in the emotions of greed and fear, you will find it very tough to follow this particular strategy. Okay, what am I saying? And this is something that you have to really keep in mind. I'm saying, the emotions, right? Emotions of greed and the emotions of fear. These are the two emotions that can play havoc for you as an investor. This is what may happen. Okay, let me just pinpoint that. How will it be so? Just see this, the first case. The first case is saying, what is the first case saying? That when the markets rise, see, when the markets rise, you should sell shares. This is what the strategy says, that if the markets have reason, sell shares. Tell me, what will happen when the markets have reason? What will happen when the markets have reason? Think now with reference to the emotion of greed. 
what do you say i'm sure you will be able to uh, you know understand what i'm trying to say what will happen you will become greedy you know when the markets have reason and you are getting 20 percent return right in our example the markets have reason by 20 percent so you are getting 20 percent return but you know what you will feel like let me wait for a few more days maybe i will get a better return right so this is what the case will be so 20 percent return is a very good return but still you feel that no what if i get a little bit more than that the strategy says that see this is 30th september let's say every quarter this is 30th september today you should sell shares but you feel that no let me wait for a few more days of october maybe i'll get a better return maybe the share price will further rise so markets have already reason i should sell shares but because now i have become greedy it has clouded my mind and hence i'm waiting for a few more days quite possible that i wait for a few days and the market still rise you know i'm patting my back let's see ashish you did the right thing there was no point of selling the shares now you are getting 22 percent return and then you know what happens one fine day in October, the markets tank down like anything, right? There's the markets fall like anything. And earlier I was getting 20% return. Now I am getting only 17% return. The problem with greed is that once you have seen a higher returns, even, uh, even after the market fall, you are getting a decent return. But if I've already seen a 22% return, Although now I'm getting 17% return, 16% return after the markets have crashed, I will keep on comparing it with the earlier return that I was getting. And hence, I may now not be prepared to sell the shares. You get it? Greed created a problem for you. So that is what you can say, an emotional issue over here. Are you in a position to control greed? When is it possible? If you are a well-disciplined investor. The other thing is also really tough. Let me show you that also. The fear factor, okay? I'll just show you that as well over here. Here, when the markets are down, what will create problem for you is fear. Market is down by 10%. What is the suggestion given by this strategy when markets are down? When markets are down, they are saying you should buy shares. How should you buy shares? by withdrawing money from the fixed deposit you know you will think in this way my money is lying safe in fd you agree with me the money is lying safe in fd and the markets have crashed what is the suggestion of this strategy the money which is lying safe in the fixed deposit withdraw money from there and put it in the stock market you will really start wondering, you know, when markets will really go down by 10%, 15%, let's say, and someone is saying that your money is lying in FD, break the FD and put the money in the equity markets, you will feel that has this person gone mad? The money which is lying safe in a bank FD, why should I withdraw it? I have already lost 10% in the stock market. I've already lost 15% in the stock market. And now this strategy is saying, withdraw money from FD, which is lying safe and invest it in the stock market. Obviously the fear factor will be there now because you will fear it will be that much difficult for us now to withdraw that money and invest it in the stock market. So that's what I was saying. These strategies are really good. The strategies are really good, provided you are a well-disciplined investor. There's one more strategy that also I will like to discuss with you. Yeah, so constant mix policy will definitely work extremely well, provided you are in a position to control your emotions of greed and fear. Are you an unemotional investor? If the answer is yes, then the strategy works really well. There's one more strategy. I will discuss that now. Yeah, formula plans. This is what we were doing. Constant mix policy, okay.
this third one that I am discussing, it is known as constant proportion portfolio insurance, popularly known as CPPI policy you may say or strategy you may say now here what happens is we are having one formula to decide how much should be invested in the equity markets it says investment in equity i'm writing equity in short investment in equity will be m into portfolio value minus floor value this is the formula that i'll be using and on the basis of that i will decide how much should be put in equity whatever is the balancing figure that i will put in a risk-free security so that is the plan here portfolio value is the total amount of money that you are ready to invest from that i'll deduct the floor value how will i get this floor value okay where floor value will be given by again i'll take portfolio value and from this i will deduct and this is a very interesting thing i will deduct maximum tolerable loss so uh, what we can say down to earth kind of a strategy you should ask yourself how much money you are ready to lose in the stock market a simple thing you are saying that i have one lakh rupees to invest very nice you have one lakh rupees to invest how much are you ready to lose are you ready to lose ten thousand rupees are you ready to lose twenty thousand rupees you know the moment you will ask this question to yourself your risk-taking ability will get revealed See, if you have higher risk-taking ability, then obviously your maximum tolerable loss will be on a higher side. And if your risk-taking ability is less, then obviously the maximum tolerable loss will be on a lower side. Another thing which is there in this formula is this figure of M. Okay, M will also depend upon your risk-taking ability. See, this difference that you are getting, you will ultimately multiply by what? Uh, uh, sorry, ultimately multiply, uh, sorry, ultimately multiply by M. So higher the value of M, higher will be the investment in equity. Lower is the value of M, lower is going to be your investment in equity. But yes, M should not be less than one. Okay, minimum of minimum, M has to be set at one or it can be above one so if you have a higher risk taking ability then you will have a higher m as a multiplier then again we are supposed to decide that at what regular intervals of time we want to carry out our rebalancing and accordingly we will rebalance on the rebalancing date you have to again apply this formula and decide how much should be invested in equity and how much should be invested in debt. That's how the decision will be taken from time to time. Just as we had done it in the earlier episode, here also, let's take some figures. See, that's necessary. Without figures, it will not become that clear. So once again, let's say, we have decided to invest total one lakh. Now the amount that I will invest in equity, you can see this is the formula. Let's assume, let's assume that we have considered M to be two and let us say the floor value to be 65,000. Okay, so the amount to be invested in equity, it will be two, portfolio value is one lakh and from that I deduct 65,000. So 1 lakh minus 65 is 35,000. 35,000 into 2, we get 70,000. I have purposefully taken these figures. See, in the earlier illustration, sorry, just a second. In the earlier illustration also, this is it. Our starting point was 70,000 in equity and 30,000 in fixed deposit. 
I want to keep this comparable. That is the reason I have purposefully taken this figure so that again you are starting your investment journey with 70 30 split. So the balancing 30,000, I will invest in the fixed deposit. That's how my 1 lakh gets invested as on today. Now, what I do is I wait for three months. Let's say the first quarter is coming to an end. Quarter one comes to an end. And let us say the markets have risen by 20%, right? The markets have risen by 20%. Great. Now, what will happen is your investment in equity, which is right now 70,000, it will rise by 20%. We had these figures earlier. I'm just taking it again. So my investment in equity, it will turn out to be 84,000. And my FDS, it is remaining 30,000. So 84,000 plus 30,000, my investment is 1,14,000 in total. So the portfolio value is 1,14,000. Now, we have to split this. Again, you have to work out how much should be in equity. So I'll decide that how much should be invested in equity. Now, equity, same formula. Multiplier will remain constant. Okay, you cannot keep on changing the multiplier. So multiplier will remain constant too. Your portfolio is now no longer worth 1 lakh. It is now worth 1 lakh 14,000. So from 1 lakh 14,000, I deduct the floor, which is 65. So 1 lakh 14 minus 65 into 2. I get this as 98,000. And your fixed deposit, understand your fixed deposit will be a balancing figure. See, total portfolio is 1,14,000. So minus 1,14, that is turning out to be 16,000 over here. Okay, 16,000 over here. So what we are saying is, that the market is up by 20%. So my equity investment is now 84,000 rupees. But my calculations are showing that it should not be 84,000. Right now, your investment in equity is 84, but actually it should be 98,000. So from 84,000, it should become 98,000. That means I should buy equity shares, right? I should buy equity shares. I should buy equity shares of 14,000. And this 14,000 is not fresh money. You have to withdraw money from the fixed deposit and invest it in the stock market. So I will say I will sell FD or you can say withdraw money from FD, which is of course 14,000. So your fixed deposit is 30,000 right now. I will withdraw 14,000. So my FD will become 16. And that 14,000 I will invest in the stock market and my investment in the equity markets will be 98,000. This is what I will do at the time of rebalancing. When will you do this? When the markets have reason. Let's say I wait for one more quarter. Okay. I wait for one more quarter. Quarter two, let's say. Yes, this time, unfortunately, the markets are down. Let's say the market is down by 10%. What to do now? What will be the value of your investment in the equity shares? It was 98,000, right? So it is down by 10%. So I'm getting 88,200. My fixed deposit will remain as it is, 16,000 rupees. So my portfolio is worth 1,4200. So this is the value of my portfolio now. Okay. Again, apply that formula and find out how much investment should be there in equity. So I say two. This is 1,4200. And my floor is 65. You cannot change. I'm again repeating it. 
you cannot change the multiplier m you cannot change your floor value on the rebalancing dates they have to remain the same so how much are we getting So one lakh four thousand two hundred minus sixty five thousand into two. It is turning out to be seventy eight thousand four hundred. Okay. Remember fixed deposit that will be a balancing figure. The total value of your portfolio has to be one lakh four thousand two hundred. So my investment in fixed deposit is turning out to be 25,800. So this is what I'm getting this time. So if you see your equity exposure, your equity is right now 88,200, but as per the CPPI, it should be 78,400. The value of equity shares is reducing. So I should sell shares. How much I should sell shares of 9,800 and this money that you are getting uh, this money that you are getting don't spend it right don't open your Amazon account see the wish list and start buying it no you are not supposed to spend it you have to park it safely in the fixed deposit so I will buy FD of 9,800 as you can observe your FD is 16,000 I will invest another 9,800 and my FD will become 25,800 over here. So this is how the CPPI is working over here. Again, as I said, it's a formula plan. Be a well-disciplined investor and you can do this. I'll just help you work it out uh, once again. See, this is the base. This is the formula that you will use for investing in the equity markets portfolio value minus floor value multiplied by some multiplier M. All your risk taking abilities will be revealed the moment you fill up the figures over here because you have to ask this question which so many investors never ask themselves. How much are you ready to lose? What's the maximum tolerable loss? A very interesting question to ask. So this is how I start 70,000 in equity and 30,000 in FD. In the first quarter, the markets are rising. Okay, it rises by 20%. So this is what this strategy does, right? This is what the strategy does. When the markets rise, it makes you buy shares. Okay, when the markets rise, it makes you buy shares. So I buy shares over here. In the second quarter, the markets crashed. When the markets crash, this strategy, okay, when markets crash, when markets crash, this strategy makes you sell shares. This is absolute opposite of what was happening in the constant mix policy. I'll draw your attention to it. Where is it? Yes, here it is. See, here it is. What was happening in this strategy? In this strategy, when markets are rising, you are selling shares. When markets are rising, you are selling shares. While here, what has happened is, when markets are rising, you are buying shares. And you're doing opposite of it. Okay, then see here. When the markets are crashing, the market is down, right? When market is down, you are buying shares. When markets crash, you buy shares. Here, what are you doing? When markets crash, you are selling shares. So it is working. Uh, the philosophy of this uh, entire strategy is opposite to what was there in the constant mix policy. Finally, when will this strategy work? This strategy works extremely well if the markets are bullish especially if the bull run has just begun then this strategy works extremely well 
the strategy does not work in an oscillating market. But let us say the markets are expected to rise. You know, there are a rising trend, then this strategy works extremely well. It will keep on making you uh, buy shares as the markets are rising. You know, as the markets are rising, you will keep on accumulating shares. Finally, when the markets reach a peak and they start falling, then you will sell the shares. So you have accumulated a large number of shares over the journey of the upward moving market. And finally, when the markets start crashing, you will book your profits by selling the shares. So that's how this strategy works extremely well.